Good morning and welcome everyone to a very special DevOps edition of our Integration Developer News Executive Webinar Series. This is Vance McCarthy, your moderator for today's event. And today we're going to continue our look at software-defined disruption and how DevOps can deliver some terrific benefits to both IT and business. And in this session, we're very glad to have with us Keith Chambers, Technical Leader at Cisco's Cloud Services Group. Keith, welcome to the event. Hi, right, thanks a lot, Vance. Thanks for having me. We're really glad to have Keith with us for this session. He's one of the folks at Cisco taking DevOps enablement to a really high level. It's embracing operations as well as front-end developers and even overall business stakeholders. Keith is going to go through how he is bringing all the pieces together for a real successful DevOps initiative for any size company in today's session. And so with that, with so much to cover, let me hand it to Keith right now. Thanks a lot, Vance. So thanks for tuning in today. We're excited to talk about hybrid DevOps and why we think that's going to be a big thing, why we think that's going to help operations, help developers, and help organizations overall to deliver software faster and to stay competitive and to help disrupt. We're going to talk about Project Shift, which is a really exciting product that we've been working on in my team to help developers get up and running quicker, deliver software very quickly to production to help scale that across intercloud and overall just to generate real value for IT and for the business. We're going to give you a preview of what we have going on at Cisco Live. We have lots of great hands-on demos. You can meet the team that's built Shipped, and then we have a really exciting lineup of kind of the who's who of the DevOps industry. So we'll talk a bit about that. And then just to give a little bit more background on myself, so I've been here at Cisco now for about 15 years. I've worked on a, a wide range of projects. I started in our technical support, which is really kind of that ops experience was there for seven years, and then move over onto the product side, where I worked on virtualization as a platform architect for a couple products at WebEx, so kind of doing DevOps before it was called DevOps, and building microservices before they were called microservices. And you know, this is a real thing that I've experienced through my career. It's a great way to accelerate the business and to scale the team and to have fun. And we want to bring the same experience, these same things we've learned to all enterprise organizations. So that's what we're here to talk about. So I'm sure everyone has noticed, but um, DevOps really needs a boost today. There's a lot of talk about it, but I think a lot of organizations I talk to, even some of them here at Cisco, were really a long ways away. And so kind of what are the challenges that we face? So right now, developers are constantly asking for new environments. And in a lot of organizations, it's the operations team that needs to deliver these non-production development environments. And, you know, that generates a lot of wait time, which is never good we still have this issue that production deployments are often failing because the non-production environments and the production environments look so much different. Ultimately, ops is still stuck there having to reason about what's wrong and the developer saying, hey, it worked on my box. So still big challenges there. And, you know, we still see at all these organizations that the only time we make change is in, you know, after hours or on the weekends or during change windows. And we're really not practicing that continuous integration, continuous deployment type model that many of us know truly make things more reliable. So operations is still stuck there in the evenings doing that sort of stuff. And, you know, developers are often complaining that operations is the bottleneck. And I don't think it's always the operations person's fault or the team's fault. In a lot of ways, it's just kind of how the system has been set up and what's in place there. But ultimately, operations has a difficult time. I think there's a lot of pressure put on them. And then, of course, the final thing is that, you know, management is always pushing for IT to move faster. They want to turn the crank faster, and it's just kind of this pressure cooker that we have right now. And those of us that are really on the development and the operation side, we need some help to get there. Other challenges that we see, you know, there is limited visibility right now across development and operations. So the guys that are developing the code, they don't know when their code is deployed or when their single line of code has been deployed. They don't see how the metrics have changed. They don't see when there's failures. And a lot of them really, really want to. They care a lot about what's going on in operations, and, and the system has been set up so that they don't have that visibility. And on the same way for operations, they don't always have visibility into what's changing. When they get the software, they get the package. They don't have the full change set, and it's just difficult. There's limited visibility across these teams. And to build a high-trust culture and to have DevOps, you really need to have visibility across the development operations. And then people are moving away from monolithic services and towards microservices, and they make sense for a lot of reasons, but it's also much more difficult to deploy and to scale microservices or distributed services 
it's a challenge. You need new tools around monitoring. Things like Docker containers are great, but you need a cluster manager to keep those up. You need to have tracing across them. So there's a lot you need to practically make the move from monolithic services to distributed microservices. And again, too much time is spent building these non-production environments and maintaining them. And a lot of times that falls back onto operations. So it's difficult right now. And I don't think that the whole environment these companies is really set up to help enable DevOps transformation. But going past that, the reality still remains that DevOps delivers results for the business. And so it's something that we still need to get to. And the business leaders are understanding that a lot more. So there's a lot of enterprise success with DevOps. So household names like Nordstrom's and MITRE and Capgemini, Cars.com, Capital One, Intuit, Netflix, these are all companies that have successfully transform themselves from being a more traditional IT shop to really a high-performance software delivery organization, and they've seen huge results out of it. And the recent Puppet Labs State of DevOps survey, which if anyone hasn't seen, I really recommend going and reading it. It has kind of the keys to the kingdom right in there. But this survey called it out, high-performing IT orgs, they're more reliable. They have twice the success rate of changes. So and when they do have failures, and this is kind of the most important thing, they're able to detect and resolve those failures 12 times more quickly than organizations that don't practice DevOps. And then finally, I think this is the big kicker for the business. So firms with high-performing IT organizations are winning, right? So they're twice as likely to be profitable. And over a three-year period, these companies have 50% higher market capitalization. So they're being rewarded for it as well. So the business understands that DevOps is a real thing. It's hard to get there. It really is. And someone needs to help them get there. And that's what we're trying to do. So what do we need to get there? So the reality is that DevOps needs a new platform approach. So what do you have today? You have between development and operations, you have, hey, it works on my box when there's a failure. It's almost a running joke, but that still happens a lot. And what you really need, though, and where we need to get to is where you have this hybrid DevOps experience for developers and operators so that they can work together closely and partner together on success. We can build these services. We can deploy them out to a hybrid cloud. That means a private cloud. I can have an on-premise open stack or VMware-based cloud. I can have a public cloud, whether that's Cisco Cloud Services or Azure, and basically being able to build applications and to deploy them across multiple different clouds. That's what we're talking about when we talk about hybrid DevOps. So how are we approaching this? Basically. Cisco and a number of different DevOps experts and partners in the space were creating this easy-to-adopt hybrid DevOps platform. And we see this becoming eventually the platform for building Internet of Everything applications. This is kind of the foundation for the Internet of Everything. And so who are the vendors that we're working with? So we're working with OpenShift, which is based on Kubernetes from GCE, Google Cloud. We're working with HashiCorp the guys behind Vagrant and Packer, Terraform, Console, and Vault. We're working with Nermata, a company that builds a multi-cloud Docker container manager, very innovative, Cloud Foundry, and Clicker, a company that helps people move their applications from on-premise to the cloud and gives them portability across cloud. So these are kind of the leading vendors that we see in this space, and we're working closely with all of these vendors. And then we're also bringing in leading DevOps experts. So just go through a couple of them here. Adrian Cockroft, who's at Battery Ventures now, but originally he was at Netflix and was kind of instrumental in that transition that they made from being a traditional IT organization to a company that was running all their infrastructure on Amazon using microservices patterns. Mitchell Hashimoto, the founder of HashiCorp and the guy who created Vagrant, kind of the tool smith of our time, if you will. Damien Edwards from podcast, from the DevOps Cafe Podcast, Gene Kim, author of The Phoenix Project, and so on. So we're working with the leading thought leaders across the DevOps space and bringing them in and asking them what they think and taking a lot of their learning and their understanding and incorporating it into what we're doing. So if you look at the modern delivery platform, you have about eight or so stages involved with it. So you have some input to this delivery pipeline, and that's usually product management. You then have tools that developers use to develop their software, to bring up their development environments, and so on. You have source control in this modern world. 
you want to have, have all of your production artifacts be version controlled. So source, source control is how you do that. You have continuous integration so the developers can check in frequently and often run a build, get rapid feedback, see whether or not that build is successful. You want to keep it so that your application is always deployable, so you have some tool that helps with continuous deployment. And then once you get it deployed out, you usually need some sort of orchestration or, or sort of cluster manager or service discovery type tools, and we're, we're bucketing those into the application orchestration. You need service assurance, so when things go down, you need to be able to figure that out quickly, and you need to be able to bring them back up. And then finally, when you do have issues and defects, you know, you need to have some sort of issue management that actually kind of feeds back into the very front, which is your project management. And one of the things that we're doing with our product, with SHIP, is that we're taking all these different phases of the life cycle, and we're tying them together through a product that Cisco has called Spark. And what Spark allows you to do is you can collaborate with your different coworkers. We have this concept of a room and create a room where the developers and the operators can work together, collaborate together. You can send messages. You can do meetings. You can send attachments. You know, so you can basically collaborate with high visibility. And then we're also taking all these different phases of the life cycle and we're integrating them with Spark so that when somebody creates a new pull request, I get a message into Spark and I can see it immediately. When somebody does a build and it fails, you know, I can see that immediately. We can see that the build is broken and the team can jump in on it. When we do a deployment and it was successful, I know that this change set has now been deployed to production. And when there was a major failure out in production, I can see that in Spark. And I can know that, hey, my code that I just changed 20 minutes ago, that just caused a production failure. And I can jump in there with the operations team if I'm a developer and help to fix that problem. So we've been using this approach as we built this product that we have called Ship. And you would be amazed to see how often Developers and operations at 2 in the morning, when something is broken, will jump in and work together to try to solve problems. People want to help each other, and when you give them the tools and you set the system up so that they can, they do automatically. It's awesome. What does it mean when we say hybrid DevOps with Internet of Everything? In practice, what we're doing is we're making it really simple for developers and operations to build and deploy services and to run them across a hybrid cloud, again, public-private cloud and we're enabling them to do that at scale. So we're building on top of massively scalable tools, the same sort of tools that you'll see at a company like a Twitter or an Airbnb. We're, we're delivering you that platform so that you can build services that can scale horizontally. That's effectively what we're doing when we talk about a platform for the Internet of Everything. And we know that to do this, we need to help to reduce the amount of lead time. So it's very critical that developers can get a production-like development environment on demand. And if I need a new production-like test environment, I can get that on demand. And if I need a production environment, I can get that on demand. That's a key thing. On demand for everyone to reduce the amount of wait time. The approach we're taking is that we're building this with tools that developers and operators actually like to use. These are open source tools, things that you've heard of before you probably use yourself, things like Vagrant and Docker. So giving the developers and the operators the tools that they already use, they already know, they already trust, and that they already love. We're making it really simple for you to get up and running to get your idea into production in about five minutes. So part of the way that we're doing that is with a couple clicks, we are doing a full integration of this CI, CD delivery pipeline. So when you have a new idea, you don't need to go and spend a month trying to figure out which tool you're going to use, how you're going to tie them together, that sort of stuff. We handle all that for you and handle the scaling of that for you as well. And then we make it simple for you to build multi-data center applications. You can deploy across public and private clouds. And then we integrate logging, monitoring, alerting, that critical feedback loop so that developers and operations can see what's going on with the services and, and resolve problems quickly. So automation and intelligence. This is consistent, immutable environments across dev, test, production giving you the ability to do one-click deployment, and more importantly almost, the ability to do a quick one-click rollback. You know, having the ability to deploy services across multiple data centers and with proper service discovery so that my service that's running on-premise in my private cloud can discover through DNS a service that's running in my public cloud. And then we are providing intelligent service frameworks that make it almost effortless for you to scale. So. 
What do we mean in practice? It's taking something like Apache Kafka, an important primitive for building out IoT applications, and wrapping all of the operations knowledge that's needed for you to scale it out, to deal with faults, to size it up and down, wrapping all of that knowledge into these frameworks and making it simple for developers and operators to deploy them and to scale them. So one critical thing in any complex system is that you have to be able to see the system. You have to be able to understand what the system looks like. When the system is larger than what someone can understand and rationalize about, they automatically get concerned about making changes to that system because you don't know what's going to be affected by that change. So it's really critical that you have a single pane of glass that allows you to visualize all the components of that service. And it's critical that you have the ability to work across hybrid environments private cloud and public cloud. There are use cases where the cycle time required for you to send traffic out of your corporate network to the public internet to get it processed and then come back is just too long, or the amount of volume is just too high. You need to have a system that allows you to deploy across private cloud and hybrid cloud together, or and public cloud together. You want to be able to manage up, that's maybe a good way of putting it, so manage applications at a higher level. You don't want to have to go and specify every single implementation detail of every component of the system to deploy it. You want to be able to say, my database needs to have high performance. This needs to be running in a regulated environment. You know, this has customer sensitive data and the system knows that, okay, that means I put it onto solid state disks. And okay, that means it's going to be running in this PCI compliant data center. Okay, and this means that we're going to do data at risk encryption. The operators of the system want to be able to state more of the intent and the system needs to have the intelligence to actually put that into place for them. And then finally, what we said before is that this platform needs to have these really powerful team collaboration tools so that the whole organization can be wired together and so that developers and operators can automatically see what's happening across the different phases of the life cycle. And when you do this, you see amazing results in terms of teamwork, collaboration, and you know, business results. So we've talked a little bit about what the challenge is, what it is that you need. So let's talk about what we've actually done and what we're going to be able to show you. So how do we realize this hybrid DevOps? Cisco's been working on a project that we called Shipped, and this was built by developers for developers. And these are developers who have done operations as well. So we have kind of three phases. We have this build, deploy, run. Those are first class phases for the product, each one of those stages and we deliver this highly visible seamless collaboration across development and operations. And we'll show you a bit of that here in just a moment. So we make it simple for you to deploy and to run applications. We do that on top of a massively scalable open source distributed platform. These are the same types of platforms that, again, Twitter, Airbnb, Google, those companies are using. And then we provide policy-based control so that you can ensure that applications are running across this hybrid cloud with security and compliance. So at Cisco Live, we're going to be first showing Project Shipped. So you can go there and you can get hands-on experience with it. There's a hackathon on June 6th, and Project Shipped will be available as an option. It's not a requirement, but it's an option for people. So you can come, you can meet the team that built Shipped. The entire engineering team will be there. If you choose to do it, you can get hands-on with it. We'll be there to hear your feedback. In addition, we have this open source project out on github.com slash Cisco Cloud called Microservices Infrastructure. And you'll also be able to meet the team that has been building that open platform. And this is really the platform that we see underpinning the shipped experience. And so in addition, if you go ahead and you want to be one of our guinea pigs and you want to hack on this project and build your hackathon ideas on top of this project, we're going to give you some rewards for that, some goodies for that. So you'll get free private repos for GitHub and including organization repos. Also Vintray is what we're using for our repositories for project ships. So we'll give those to you at no charge as a way of saying thank you for giving us feedback on our brand new product. So what do you get if you come to Cisco Live or why should you come to Cisco Live? So you can go hands on with this whole hybrid DevOps experience that we've been talking about. So there's a hackathon and we have some pretty serious prizes at the hackathon. So first prize is $10,000. Second is 5000 and third is 2500 so some good money there. We have a number of different learning labs. So we'll walk you through Project Shipped and help you to build an application in Shipped. We'll talk to you about 
the microservices framework that we've been building. You can meet the team that's been working on it. And we have a lot of other stuff going on as well. HashiCorp will be there. Clicker will be there talking about how you can deploy and migrate applications to InterCloud. And then also we have a lot of good stuff on big data with Hortonworks and some other companies talking about kind of the data side there. You know, we have a lot of these classroom instructions kind of going over those same sorts of things. You can really get hands-on. And then we have some exciting new technology also that we're going to be rolling out. So there's a lot going on at Cisco Live. We really encourage people to come out and to join us. So, yeah, where's it at? We're at Cisco Live San Diego in San Diego, California. The hackathon is going to be hosted on the weekend before. That's June 6th through 7th. The DevNet Zone itself is going to be open that entire time, the 6th through the 11th, and the main conference is during the 7th through the 11th. And to help make it easy for you guys to all come out, we have a special rate on the DevNet Zone, and that's only $49, which is a great deal. So for $49, you can come out, meet all of our DevOps experts, meet the teams behind this product, and understand how you can get involved and get involved. Keith, great session, great overview of both what you're doing with hybrid DevOps as well as what Cisco is doing to pull together a community and actually let developers participate. We're going to leave a slide up here that again refreshes folks about the ways that they can participate in the Cisco Live DevNet Zone event. And also a slide up here for folks that can't come to the event, we certainly want them to participate in the DevNet community and how to get engaged online with your ongoing hybrid DevOps efforts in the community. Thanks again, everyone, for attending. I think we all agree that we got a terrific session here with Keith Chambers, Technical Lead at Cisco.